Well, I hope you're doing well these days. Uh, I think many of you already know that uh, a couple of years ago, Brenda and I spent four or five months backpacking around Southeast Asia. And while we were there, we picked up a few things. One was a parasite in Cambodia, which was pretty nasty. Two, we took about a million pictures. And three, and most importantly, we got this stuff. This is a chili paste we learned how to make all the way over in Thailand. It's pure gold, and since some of you have asked about it, today I'm gonna to show you how to make it. So I will put a full recipe down in the video description down below for those of you who want it. But what you're gonna need is a red onion, red bell pepper, a bunch of garlic, lime, a couple of carrots, and these bad boys. These are a dried Thai chili. They're pretty hard to find, well, at least where we're at here. So I'll put a link to these down below as well because you can pick them up on Amazon, which is what we've had to do. But these are crucial. You're gonna need these. But before we get started, there's a couple of things we should go over. First of all, is this stuff is spicy. Like really spicy. If you're not careful, it'll melt your face clean off and kill you dead. So treat it with respect. Secondly, is that um, I think you can kind of liken this chili paste to a salsa in Mexico. They're staples all throughout the country. Everybody makes them and everybody's version is different. So this is an authentic Thai chili paste based on the sweet little Thai woman who showed us how to make it. But that doesn't mean it's the only version out there. And the couple of months we spent in Thailand in particular, we tried tons of them. But this one is the best by far that we had. It's got heat and depth of flavor. It, it's incredible. First step is to chop all this stuff up. So let's get chopping. All of these veggies you're gonna to wanna to chop and dice in a fairly small chunks. That's gonna help with the cooking. The basic premise with these five basic ingredients, which is your red bell pepper, your Thai chili peppers, your red onion, carrot, and uh, garlic, is that they all are equal in proportion. So whether you're making a gallon of this stuff or a tiny mason jar, which is what we're doing today, it's equal parts, as close as you can get them. Here in this house, we like things spicy. A little spice in your life's not a bad thing. But my tolerance of heat is nowhere near someone who was born and raised in Thailand. It's worlds apart. So I actually shrink down the chili peppers a little bit just because that's all I can take. All right, that is a pile of peeled garlic. Now we gotta chop them just like everything else. Cut off the little woody end and dice away. This is a lot of garlic. So be careful, don't cut your fingers off. Take your time. We don't want a bloodbath here. Done. If you've been paying attention, you probably noticed we haven't done anything with our chili peppers yet. So you get a gold star. But we are gonna deal with those in a minute. For now, we're gonna get this stuff going. What we're gonna use to cook this stuff in is this Dutch oven. I would highly recommend something with high sides. Whether you got a wok, Dutch oven, stock pot, anything will work, but high sides is pretty recommended because this is gonna simmer in a bunch of oil for a while. And if you don't have high sides, it's gonna splatter all over and make a mess. And don't say I didn't warn you. So our veggies are going into a cold pot. We're gonna bring this all up to temperature together. We don't want anything to sear or burn or anything like that. They're going for a long, slow simmer. Now that the veggies are in, we're gonna top it off with canola oil. This is a neutral oil. This is not gonna be the flavor of anything. This is just a neutral cooking oil that's gonna soak up all this flavor. So we're gonna put all the veggies in and then top it off with the canola oil to the level of the veggies. All of this stuff is gonna simmer on the stove for 25, 30 minutes until it gets a bit of color and it's all gonna cook down. So now that this is on, we really just wanna let this simmer for 20, 30 minutes. We want the edges to get golden brown, but not burn. So you don't need to mess with it. You can just let it sit here. All right, with that stuff simmering away on the stove, we're gonna take care of 
These bad boys, I'm telling you right now, these will kill you dead. They are spicy. They're really more spicy than I can take. So the official recipe that we learned in Thailand calls for equal parts of these as well as the rest of the veggies. I cannot take that much heat and I can stand some heat. So typically I make this with about half the called for Thai chilies. They're just, they're just way too hot for me. So we're gonna go through the same process of dicing these up finely, just like we did with the rest of the veggies, and then we'll add these to the mix when those are just about done. And again, with the veggies simmering on the stove, we just want them to get golden brown, and that's when they're done. We don't wanna overdo it. And about the same time that we add these chilies to the mix, we're gonna add some soy sauce, both a light and a dark, as well as some lime and a little bit of sugar. But I did wanna say, if you aren't able to find dark soy sauce, which I can't around where we're at, tamari is actually a pretty good substitute. It's not the same, but it's a good substitute. The other thing I'll say is that if Thai chili peppers are too spicy for you, you can make this with all sorts of different chili peppers. We've done it with roasted serranos, jalapenos, different varieties that we've been able to find in Mexico when we were down there. And all of them are great but they all give you a little different outcome. All right, so this has been going for about 20, 25 minutes, something like that. And as you can see, we're just starting to get a little bit of color on these veggies. And that means it's time to add in our chili peppers. We're just gonna give them a few minutes in here simmering with the rest of the veggies, get them livened up. Those are gonna sit for just a quick minute and then we're gonna finish it off with the soy sauce, sugar, and lime. And the rest of this is gonna go really fast. All right, now you can really see it's got a bit of color to it, which is just what we want. So we wanna turn the heat down a bit so we don't burn anything. So now we're down all the way to a low. I'm gonna add in our one full lime, the juice from one lime. tablespoon of sugar. Then we'll add a tablespoon of dark soy sauce, a tablespoon of light soy sauce, and then a quick mixy mix, and this is just about done. Okay, so now that's all in there. We're gonna take it off the heat and let it cool. As you can see, this is a pretty deep, rich, dark, chili paste, or at least the base for the chili paste. Uh, we're gonna let this actually cool for a few minutes and then pulse it in a blender and that'll actually turn it into a paste. And then it's gonna be great. All right, this has had a few minutes to cool and now we just need to do the final step. We're gonna blend it to turn this into a paste. And for goodness sakes, let it cool before you blend it. Otherwise you'll have a chili paste explosion on your hands and I don't want to be responsible for that. Let it cool, put it in a blender, and we're just going to give it a quick couple pulses. At this point, what you should have is something that looks like this. Doesn't look great, but in about 10 seconds it will be. That's it, Thai chili paste, and it's incredible. Um, we really let this sit overnight to let all the flavors meld together, but you do whatever you want. You're an adult, at least I assume you are. But like I said before, be careful if you use the Thai chili peppers at full strength. Use at your own risk, it may kill you dead. So. We typically will let this sit in the fridge overnight and uh, settle so you'll get a, a little layer of oil on top for people who like chili oil, that's me. And uh, the bottom will be more of a chili paste, which really goes on everything. We really use it for everything. Soups on eggs, on sandwiches, hummus, eggs benedict, you name it. We use this for everything.
it's kind of amazing stuff. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Make yourself some chili paste and be careful with it. See you later. In the next morning, this little bit of chili paste will turn this fresh out of the oven quiche from a breakfast that was sure to be pretty darn good into something that will surely be pretty darn great.